don't go live on Thursdays, but uh, I was inspired to go live today, um, so I'm breaking my own regular, <laughs> regularly scheduled plan, so this is uh, this is a fun show. Drop a message in the comments. Tell us where you're coming from today. Let's, uh, let's help get you some exposure, maybe. Uh, oh, thank you, man. I always try to put some music in there. I got, uh, I got a bunch of them. I download them uh, honestly from YouTube. YouTube has a safe music list that you can um, download and then put these song tracks in your videos without getting uh, in any kind of copyright trouble. So that's kind of cool. So people from all over, we got a couple from, uh, there's one that was Nigeria and Ghana, welcome. Um, another one from Nigeria, welcome. We got uh, somebody from Doha, Qatar, welcome. And let's say Pune, India, welcome. Egypt, welcome. This is one of the reasons why, and of course, we've got the United States, Arkansas. Somebody was asking, why is Kansas and Arkansas pronounced differently? And I'm like, that's the English language. I don't know. It's kind of crazy, but it is what it is. Sonia, good morning from Kenya. Welcome, Daniel. Uh, India, is that is that pronounced Nagpur? Nagpur? I don't know. Iran, welcome. So there's people from all over. I love it that I have a global network. It is pretty cool. I know some people shy away from adding people all over the world because they are not comfortable. Um, they, I don't know what it is. And I used to kind of feel that way too, honestly. But a couple of years ago, I had an epiphany. I'm like, why not join and connect with people from all over? I have learned a ton about culture, about religion, about politics, about traditions. It's been really, really cool. I think he's laughing about the Kansas and Arkansas thing. But yeah, they're spelled the same, A-R and then Kansas and Kansas. You'd think it'd be Arkansas and Kansas or Kansas and Arkansas, right? I mean, that's what it should be. But English is a fun thing. South Africa, good morning. Um, I'm not, <laughs> I don't want to butcher your name. I'm not even going to try. Sorry. That one, that one goes beyond my English speaking tongues capabilities. So anyways, I don't know if you guys saw the show topic today. He is laughing about that. Let's see. It's good. It's kind of funny. I uh, I was just on a networking uh, call. We have a, a, a thing called the business roundtable. Happens every Thursday. Starts at 730 in the morning my time. It's open networking for 30 minutes. And then we have a, a, a topic that we present. And then we do a little bit more networking at the end. It's free. You all can join. Um, go to exityourway.us to register or send me a DM. I can send you the link. But anyways, um, the topic this week that we were talking about was mental health. And many of you know that I lost my very good friend, um, Kirstie Bonner, just a couple of weeks ago to suicide. And uh, I just wanted to check in with people. So again, this isn't a normal show that I do. And uh, I'm going to tell you guys some things. I'm going to be transparent. And I want you to know that just what you see on the surface with everybody isn't always what's real, right? It's one of the things I don't like about social media is we kind of compare ourselves to the highlight reel 
of what people are really living because that's what most people show on social media. They show either something they fabricated so it's better than even what they really are going through or they give you the absolute highlights of their day or their life. And so you think that's, you know, you're comparing against this impossible dream to quote Don Quixote, right? So for Manuel La Mancha, in case you're curious about the references. So what I'm, what I'm talking about today is how are you doing? Because I was inspired by this conversation. Look, it was, it was interesting to hear different people's points of view. And I know that this is a professional platform, but even in the professional space, when somebody says, I'm fine, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, the sneeze was not going to stop. Okay, so I got that out of my system. Um, but when someone says fine, there was an interesting vernacular for an acronym that my friend Professor Pete put up in the uh, in the other one. I'm not going to repeat it because it had it actually had a, a colorful word that I don't want to repeat. But anyways, oh, this is a bummer. Yeah, you know that's that's tough because then if you read it. It's hard to sleep. They probably were just trying to clear their deck. They they had already moved on from you and they didn't consider the hour. Sorry that that happened. But you know, the good news is about that, Lee, is they let you know. So that's cool. So you're not wasting uh, your time. Too many people in the job search are stopping in hope. Okay, this is the one. I feel really good about this one. And they're stopping. And, I, and one advice I would give you and this isn't what the show is about, right? This isn't Ask Ira. That Ask Ira Job Seeker Q&A is Mondays and Saturdays, in case you guys want to join me for that. But I will answer this. Because it, it's, it, it does, in a way, offshoot to the topic. This depression, it's depressing to be rejected, or it can be. But what I will say is never stop trying to land a job until you're done onboarding. Just in case anywhere in the process something falls apart. So I understand what you're saying. You probably didn't sleep very well, but at least you didn't go to bed with the hope that you were going to land that job. So in a, in a sense, it could be a blessing, I guess. But keep trying, brother. Keep your head up. There's a job out there for you. That could be better, but us could be much worse. Yeah, this is something that I think a lot of people are like this, Michael. But I want to address it, and I want to address some strategy on how we all maybe can be better. Yeah, and there, there are plenty of people, like for me personally... I am an introvert too. I know a lot of you wouldn't guess that. People look at me cross-eyed when they tell them I'm an introvert, but I really mean it. I really am. Uh, I sit in, I sit in a room by myself 10 to 12 hours of the day. Like I'm out with my family, you know, an hour, two hours a day. And that's just me being completely honest with you. I sit behind my computer most of every day now because of what I do for a living. So, and I'm and I'm fine with it, but I actually go out there so they know that I don't not love them or like them. You know what I mean? I want them to know that I do like them. I'm in here trying to earn a living for them, but a lot of people struggle with it. So here's what I want to do. I want to like remove the veneer a little bit today, not just for me, but from you. So the more transparent you are, the more therapeutic this can be, the more helpful this can be. But let's talk about some strategies. One of the things that we were talking about in this networking event, and I want to carry the conversation into this is when you start to develop friendship or you're a friend of somebody and they struggle with depression or maybe some things that you don't even know about, right? Some core issues could be they were molested as a child, they were raped, um, maybe they were abused physically or mentally somewhere along the way. It could be an employer, it could be a parental thing, could have been anything. Maybe they struggle with addictions to alcohol or sex or drugs or, again, whatever. Most of the time, when you meet people, they're not going to they're not going to lead with that, right? That's not that's not something we lead with, right? And I've had some of those issues in my past, including being homeless, which is still something that I think about, and it's one of the things that pushes me to to succeed, so that I don't. Um, so that I don't get back there, right? I wasn't homeless because I didn't do something right. I was a child, right? I was in the seventh and eighth grade. So 
<clears throat> there are there are things that happen that that have lingering long-term ramifications usually the surface level friendships and the coworker relationships and the employee employer relationships don't usually get that deep i've never had a conversation with anybody about those things at that at those levels right i've never worked for somebody that i shared that i was homeless with or that i was sexually abused as a child or whatever i've never shared those things okay with an employer or with a coworker, or with somebody I just met. Now I'm sharing it with the whole world. So, <laughs> but I'm doing it for a purpose, right? I'm not looking for sympathy or empathy or any of those things. I'm trying to be transparent with you so that you can be on the lookout and maybe a little bit more sensitive to the people that you do have a better relationship with. Cause maybe you've never even thought about the things that they might be struggling with as a person, but there are warning signs that I want you to consider. And this is why I'm bringing it all up. If you're used to chatting with somebody, like maybe, you know, you DM or maybe you send texts or you give them a call every once in a while. If somebody starts to engage differently than their normal operating, that's a warning sign that or a trigger, a warning of a trigger. And you might want to just check in on them. Right. Sounds a little weird i know from a professional standpoint but trust me if you are in the inner circle of somebody or they they've allowed you in past their exterior security system and you know they would share in confidence with you things that they wouldn't make public then you are a person that they trust to a certain level maybe not completely but right so they trust you because they've let their guard down around you to some capacity then one of the ways that you can help your fellow man, mankind, is to pay attention to those things. And so as you are considering where you are, one of the things I want you to do first is to be open and observant to the people that you engage with. If you have a friend that you haven't heard from in a while, just check in. A simple how you doing can go a million miles encouragement one of, i was talking to somebody earlier today completely off topic she um sends me links when she posts and uh, it's okay it's one of my clients and so you know, she said hey i really appreciate when you when you respond to my posts and i hope you get something out of it she threw that and it was probably just a throwaway line at the end but I responded to that. I'm like, actually, I don't get anything personally out of it other than the satisfaction of knowing that I'm helping you. Like when I comment on your post, frankly, I'm going to tell you all the same thing. It doesn't do much for me with my network size, but it can do a lot for you. And so I don't mind helping you out when I can. And that's just part of my nature. So, you know, I said that to her and she's like, wow, I'm really thankful for that. And I'm like, you know, look, you're one of my clients. When you do well, I do well. So it is, in a sense, self-serving in that way, you know, because I'm helping her build her network by engaging with her posts. So, you know, it's one of the benefits of hiring Bowman Digital Media, I guess, is you get a little extra attention from Ira publicly on your posts. And, you know, that helps you build your visibility, which helps you build your sales. And anyways, so to whom you, you were talking today, I'm not sure the question that you're asking in the group, the networking group is the exit, exit your way round table is the, is the group. So exit your way. If you can't see it, it's that way. <laughs> that right there is exit your way. And if you go to exit your way.us, it's not .com or org, it's .us. So let me put that in the comments. You guys can, you guys can visit exit your way. US is the, the company URL. I work, oh, it doesn't recognize it as a, hang on, I'll fix that for you. When you see me look this way, I'm looking at one of my three monitors. I have a monitor there, a monitor there, and the monitor here, and the camera's here, so I try to look at this one. But anyways, if you are interested, click on that link and, um, that will 
take you to the exit your way. You can sign up for the round table. You can watch previous re previously recorded sessions. I think it takes about a day. So if you go back tomorrow, you can watch this whole show uh, conversation. We had a, an expert on the topic. And then we brought in Dr. Amelia, who is another, and then we had an HR person join us right at the end, Kelly from Pananos. So it was a really neat um, panel conversation. Then it was Dame and Andrew and myself. You know, we are the owners of Exit Your Way. So anyways, uh, what? I got a question here. Hang on a second. If you have questions, by all means, this is, this is an open conversation. Sir, what is money role in our life? Yeah, so money is a tool. I mean, it is, as far as I know, you need it everywhere around the world. So money isn't the ultimate thing. It's just one of those things that it requires money. You got to make money to live because I got to pay. I don't know about you, but I live in the United States. I live in California. Okay, I live in LA area, Los Angeles area of California. It is really, really expensive to live here, right? So I have to pay my mortgage. I have to pay my power bill. My power bill a couple months ago was $900. That's 900 US, one month of power, just as an idea of how crazy it is, how expensive it is to live here. So I've got a lot that I have to, you know, earn, not because I want to be selfish or I'm trying to be the next Bill Gates, just to, to survive, right? I think... Suraj, I think that's how you say it. Suraj, for me, money is not the end goal. You know, money is just a number. But yeah, no kidding. Ouch is right. But the fact is, we need money. So you can't ignore it. There's some people who will to try to... What is the topic today? The topic today is... This is, this is a special session. It's about how are you doing about depression, about checking in, relationships. We're isolated. We've been isolated for six months. I remember when they, they first put out this. Um, it was 14 days to flatten the curve. That's what we were told, right? 14 days. Unprecedented at that point, right? We're going to isolate ourselves as a nation. In the United States, and I know other parts of the world, you guys did it a little differently. Uh, some maybe did it better, some maybe did it worse. But anyways, that's what the United States did. <laughs> President comes out, their panel and says, 14 days, self-isolate, and this curve will flatten out, and we'll, we'll get back to normal. Right? That was the idea. That was six months ago. We have had the most unique period of time globally, I think in the history of the world and think about it this is this is the understatement of the year vicky it's um it's unbelievable there are people who don't pay nine hundred dollars a month for their mortgage right it's it's insane and um i'm not talking about running a, a major factory or you know, something crazy, like my air conditioner at this time is set at 78 degrees and 80 degrees. I have two air conditioners because we have an upstairs and a downstairs. So we had alternated like 80 degrees is you might as well be outside. Now it's a hundred and something degrees outside at that time, but still it's not like it's an ice box in here and we're want, running around in you know, long sleeve shirts and stuff. I'm talking about we're sweating inside. Trying our best to conserve power, still with 900 bucks. So anyways, yeah, so this is what I'm talking about. It didn't work. I'm not saying they could have done anything to stop this thing, and maybe everything would have resulted with us being alone. I'm not trying to talk politics here, although I don't mind if we talk about politics. But the point is, nobody, none of you, Maybe if there is somebody from Antarctica or Alaska who's like researcher stuff and you do stuff and you know what I mean? Maybe you've been isolated for six months by yourself individually, but I'm going to guess that most of you have never been isolated for six months anyways, but now all of us have. And that's what makes it unique. It's a global thing. Like life is not normal. 
I don't know that life is ever going to be the old normal ever again. There's something called a paradigm shift, which is a new normal, basically. And I think I think maybe that we're there. Part of it, as I've talked about in previous shows, fractional work, contract work, anything that doesn't have um, benefits attached to it, basically, because it's cheaper for the employers, but also remote work. I don't think that I don't think we're ever going to go back to where everybody works in an office anymore. I think that employers have seen the benefit when you have a remote workforce, you don't have to have as big an office. So now when these lease, these building leases come due and they've got 200,000 square feet or 50,000 square feet in a downtown high rise or whatever, I think a lot of those are going to go by the wayside. That's just, you know, that's my own personal thought on it. But If you've ever had to write those checks for a company, you know, for property, for taxes, for lease, for all that stuff, overhead, and then all the, I mean, just the, the stationary and the, the snacks in the refrigerator. I mean, there's a ton of stuff that comes along with having a big office building that people don't have to do anymore. If they continue to have a remote or a large portion of remote workers, right? So if you can reduce the size of your building and save money, that's a, that's a significant savings. I think that, that businesses are going to look hard at that. And you also open up, you know, the ability to hire people from anywhere. You know, one of the things that project help you grow, which I run project help which is just a free service to help job seekers connect with, uh, employers and recruiters. That's the goal, right? So that bridge service, one of the things that I, I get asked about every single day is, hey, I'd like to work abroad. I'd like to work somewhere that I, I'm not already, right? It could be anywhere. If somebody's in Australia, wants to work in the UAE. Somebody's in the UK and they want to go to Canada. Somebody's in the United States and they want to go, you fill in the spot, right? It, it, I mean, the grass seems to be greener for people. Wherever they are, they don't want to be which is funny because a lot of times people tell me that they've never even visited the place that they supposedly want to live. And it's like, you don't necessarily want to live there. You want to live in your fantasy, but that's another topic for another day. But one of the things that this does realistically is allows people from anywhere to work anywhere. So, you know, if you wanted to work in the United States and you're outside the United States, for example, if you could get a remote job working from where you are, working for that company, there is the possibility that later you could transfer And that's probably the number one strategy that I have for people right now is work for them locally if you can, and then ask for a transfer later, right? It's a, it's a strategy because then they get to know you, they're invested in you. And, you know, anyways, that's a strategy. Again, this isn't a job seeker show, but what I'm talking about today is, or what I'd like to talk about, how are you doing with the isolation? And beyond that, are you looking in on your friends? Because I'm going to tell you from my, my perspective, and I'm not a psychologist, but from my perspective, an owner, a business owner or a manager is not going to realistically be able to help a, an employee because the employee employer or the employee manager systematic roles that are established don't allow for that kind of frank candor. And so there's always a, I'm fine. I'm doing good. Even when it's chaos at home. And this is where I was going with the, you know, if somebody's let you in past that, that outer layer, their exterior defenses, right? If they're your friend or your friendly and you communicate with somebody on a regular basis and then you notice any type of a change in either the frequency or the responses, that's a potential warning sign. You just want to check in with them. And I think that's what we could do better as human beings, right? I know from my own personal, I'm going to get to this in a second. From my own personal experience, when I'm slow to respond to messages, I see them and I don't respond. 
it's a sign that I'm mentally tired because usually I respond to stuff right away. So I have learned to identify in my own personality, in my own mind, that when I'm slow to respond, that I have some work to do on my, on my attitude, on my thought process, some personal care is required. And, you know, we all are different. We're all wired different. That's why I'm asking, how are you doing? Have you thought about how you're doing? Are you perhaps struggling and not even identified that that is why you're struggling, right? It could, it could manifest itself in a whole bunch of ways. Alcohol, sex, maybe you're, you're having conversations with people you wouldn't normally have conversations with. You're fighting with people you wouldn't normally fight with. You're being more um, combative. You know, maybe you're having relational issues with your spouse that, again, it's manifesting from this, from this isolation period. Are people even thinking about this? I don't know that I was, honestly, until a couple months ago. But as this has dragged on, month after month. Again, we were promised 14 days of self-isolation to flatten the curve. And now it's six months. So just want to check in and say how you're doing. I lost a friend to suicide just three weeks ago. And I don't want to lose any more. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just checking in. And if you need help, of course, let's let's get you the help you need. My issue is I'm a 20-year military veteran with years of supervisory managerial experience. Apply for jobs that get turned down. For being overqualified, I'm approached for sell insurance cars. It's depressing. Yeah, so I don't know who this is because it says LinkedIn user. I'm going to see if I can find it in the comments. Oh, John. Okay. John, you got to open your um, security settings on LinkedIn if you can and just let it allow third parties. And then we'll see your picture and your, uh, your name here. But are you, John, aware of vets to industry? I'm going to put them in the. Okay, so vets to industry.com. This is a resource, John, I want you to check out. And any other military folks, transitioning is hard. And the overqualified is, is becoming more normal too. And here's why. Ultimately, when they say you're overqualified, there's two things that come into, into play. One, it's about money. They don't want to pay you. They don't want to pay you what um, you're worth. And two, they're worried that once the pandemic is over and things get back to normal, if they hire somebody who's overqualified for a position, they're going to not be satisfied and they're going to leave, which means another job search later. So they're trying to curb their risk by they're trying to curb their risk by not hiring somebody who's overqualified for the job so that they have what we call employee satisfaction. And I know that gets a little technical for some people to understand, but that's the, that's the mindset from the employer's side of it. When you look at the POVs and you step into the employer mentality, that's what it is. It's about, it's about money in two different ways. They don't want to have to pay you more than They've budgeted for the position and they don't want to have to replace you in six months or a year because this was a, just a, a bridge gap for you. They, they want somebody long term. That's why the five the five year question is so important. When you answer it, you need to answer that with a vision that includes working for that company. It'll help you with that. I didn't get to read this yet. Huge for veterans, researchers, service can hurt some job seekers, prospects, experiments. Yeah, this is a huge, this is a huge issue, actually, William or Bill, however you go, uh, whatever you get called. It, there is a stigma, 100%. Uh, some, some people look at the military service as, uh, as a negative, which is a shame because the vets really are the ones who have afforded us the freedoms to continue to live the way we live. So for me, I'm pro-veteran. And I would hire veterans, I'm just going to be completely honest, I would hire a veteran over a non-veteran if I had the choice. But there are people who have the opposite slant. And one of the reasons is uh, they're scared 
even though they won't admit it and they won't phrase it that way, but they're scared of PTSD. They're scared of uh, what some of you might refer to as postal syndrome. Um, it, mental, m look, mental disorder, mental depression. This is a, it's like a taboo topic. That I'm talking, I'm talking about today. Look, I got, I've got less viewers on this show right now than I've had in a long time because this topic is something that people just don't want to talk about. It's, it's like, you know, let's bury our heads in the sands and pretend everything's good. And it's not, I know for a fact, a lot of you are struggling. You're not going to make it public. I get it. I don't necessarily expect you to. That's fine. But it is real. Isolation has been tough. I look forward to your live sessions to connect to others. Thanks, LJ. LJ is a job seeker, in case you are curious. And uh, if you would do me a favor, go look at her profile and uh, and see if you could help her out. Encouraging word. Comment on her, um, comment on her posts. Um, visibility. I'm going to tell you guys uh, a strategy. I know a lot of you would like to build. It is super hard to ask for help. There is no doubt about it. You know, and again, this is where the friendships are so important. I think the best role for you to help somebody or to seek help because you can be transparent is a non-work related friendship, right? Especially, I don't know if you guys go to church or not, and you know, I'm not going to get into religion on this thing, but I'm a believer. I go to church three times a week, and uh, I'm not saying that for a pat on the back or anything. I'm just telling you, I, I spend a significant amount of time at, at church each week. And so because I spend that time at church, I have church friends, like people that I know beyond surface level, right? Those are people that I would consider part of the group that you might want to consider sharing these things with, right? Thanks, Eric. I appreciate that. It's always nice to see my friends and I know you're busy. I'm just carrying over actually this conversation from the round table that I invited to you to earlier. Um, but anyway, so we're talking about this mental thing, okay? This mental battlefield. I have written an article on Project Help You Grow. In fact, I've written a couple because I do deal with, struggle with depression myself it is something that I deal with, not just because of COVID, but um, yeah, it's good. There's a lot of us, which is awesome. Um, but I wrote a couple different articles on the mind as a battlefield. So if you have any of those issues, go to Project Help You Grow. Go to the blog. It's one of the older ones, so you'll have to you'll have to search a little bit to find it. Just go through older, and you'll see it. Anyways, there's a couple. Read those. It might be a help to you. Let me see what this is. Check out. William Carefree works with military person. Yeah, there you go. There's all kinds of resources out there for military folks. In fact, the project help you grow if you go to the partners tab. I've got a few of them. There's vets to PM. There's vets to industry. I've got a few different sources on on my site. And again, it's free. But what William uh, Kuiper said was was spot on. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, William Barb. This one's spot on too. Click on this. See how it, see how it goes. It, it's a it's a struggle out there, but it's. Oh, well, thank you, Sabrina. I, it's one of the, you know, I'll, I'll be fully transparent with you guys on this. Going live every day has actually hurt me. Um, it's it's brought my momentum on social media way down because they don't perform nearly as well as a text-only post. And so there's an opportunity cost for me to come live to you guys each day. But when I think about the job seeker shows, when I think about, well, actually, I'm 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 getting ready to pull the plug on the on the blog show because it just it's not getting any attention. Um, I like it personally, but it's not connecting with the audience. So I'm going to have something different there. But these shows are designed to help in different ways, and so if they're not helping, then I'm going to pull them. But when I wasn't going live, but once or twice a week. I had a lot more momentum going on my posts. So it is something that I've noticed um, anyways. But thank you for that. It's, it's, it's a joy to know that it's, it's reaching people and it's a blessing. So what do you think about this year? Your opinion, new business plan? Uh, I launched a business. Bowman Digital Media was born in June of 2020. I actually was furloughed in May from ARC Document Solutions. 
you know, it's funny because I joined them right at the end of 2019, December 30th, 2019 was my start date. And then I was furloughed uh, April 30, 30th for the month of May. They told me at the, I was so mad. They called me after five o'clock the last day of April and said, hey, you're going to go on furlough. Great. Thanks for that. Right. What does that even mean? I didn't even really know what furlough was. I had to look it up. So basically what it is, is like you're technically not fired, but you don't get any pay. You don't get any of your benefits. You're just you're like <laughs> you're in limbo. And then uh, they told me they were going to bring me back. So I didn't need to look for a job or anything. That's what they told me. And then the last day of May, I was told, yeah, you're going to be laid off. So then I had no job. So for me, it was like, okay, well, do I want to start looking for a job now? Uh, and I really didn't want to. And I've, I've got this social media uh, network, as you guys know. And I've been in the graphics business, the print business for 20 plus years. And so I thought, you know what, I'm, just, I'm going to start my own thing. So I created Bowman Digital Media. You can thrive in this financial climate it might look a lot different than what it would have looked like back in February, right? The paradigm that I talked about earlier has changed. So if you are flexible, you can, you can adapt, then you actually can do fine. One of the, the business plans, I'm going to give you a successful strategy, not for everybody, but for a lot of people that most people are not even thinking about. And it's this term called fractional work. A fractional employee is somebody who gets paid on a contract. And there are a variety of ways that you can structure it. But basically, the bottom line is it's kind of like a fixed term contract where you work a certain amount of time or produce a certain amount of, of results and you get paid like that. And there are no benefits. You're actually at that point considered an independent business. So you would open up your own, like it could be Nishad Inc. or Nishad LLC, right? So you create your own business. And then the business invoices the company, right? And so you have a 1099 kind of thing going on or a W9 kind of, kind of thing going on. But anyways, those jobs or those opportunities are out there a lot of times with very little to no competition where a traditional role with all the benefits that people are used to, you have more competition than ever because the economy has so many unemployed. The unemployment rate globally is so high, you know. So you just learn to swim in a in a pool. It's like the red ocean versus the blue ocean. The red ocean, which is a metaphor, but the red ocean is like, you know, the place where it's super crowded. And, you know, the competition is dense versus the blue ocean, which is wide open. There's nothing but swimming lane, right? So fractional work is one of those things I implore people to consider. Also, when you're doing your job search, try, try looking for temporary jobs. Try looking for part-time jobs. Try looking for fixed-term contract jobs. If you open up your search and consider all your options, you can not only maybe stem the tide, right, bridge gap, but you might actually find a way to thrive. I'll be completely honest with you. I made more money in August at Bowman Digital Media than I would have made if I kept my job at ARC. So it can be done. Now, is it for everybody? No. And are there added expenses for doing it this way? Yep. I have to pay for my own health care and it's more expensive than if I had uh, the benefit package, but it is doable. One of the things that people seem to, to like think they're, they're, I hate to use the term slave, but they think they're a slave to this, this role where they're chained, restricted, and they don't have the option because they need those benefits. But I'm going to tell you that I have every benefit that I had before. With ARC, I have with Bowman Digital Media. Now, I do pay for it, 
but I'm also able to make more money and I'm, and I'm paying for it. You know what I mean? So fractional work, if you add them up, you can actually make more than one full-time job. You can actually get above that percentage and that's where you start to win. So that's the advantage of it. What do I think about a business plan? I think it's absolutely smart to have a solid business plan. I think if you're looking in today's world, you need to look at the possibility. What I said earlier, that the paradigm has changed and we're never going back to where we used to be. The world will look different post COVID-19 than it did pre COVID-19. How much different is still yet to be determined. My world is way different because now I'm a business owner. I work, I get, I get paid by my clients to make their websites, to make videos, to do graphics. I do social media marketing, SMM. That's what I get paid to do. I am literally behind my computer all day now from the time I get up pretty much to the time I go to bed working on projects, working on social media. This is what I get paid to do. Before, I was paid to go make in-person visits with the majority of my day. When I was at my computer all day, I would get static from my employer going, hey, what are you doing? You need to be out there, right? Now, it's the opposite. Now, when I leave my computer, it's kind of like, I'm my own boss, but like, man, I got to get back. I got to get back to my seat and get to work. Have a business plan. If you don't have a good business plan, then you really do need to, to develop one. I was on a post earlier with uh, one of my friends, Derek, and Derek was like, do you have goals? And I'm like, I have goals. I have a 10 year plan, a three year plan. I have quarterly plan, I have monthly plan, and I have weekly plan. But those start, those plans start with long-term goals, personal and professional. And then what I do is I then come up with benchmarks. And then from there, the plans get developed to hit those. And everything's in alignment that way. And that's what keeps me on task. That's what keeps me on track. It's one of the reasons why I have the IRA guide. Right? The IRA guide lets you know when and where to find me and what I'm going to be talking about. And you very rarely will see me do these types of shows where I'm off on a tangent. But I know this, and it doesn't seem like anybody wants to talk about it, so I guess it wasn't a great idea. But I do know this. There are more people struggling right now in their mind than you are probably aware of. You might actually be struggling and you're not even, you haven't put it all together. You know something's bugging you, but you don't know what. You don't know how to fix it. Telling you to look inside yourself and make sure that you're doing okay. But imploring you to reach out to your friends and check up on them. How are they doing? Because if we all would just, I mean, today, just reach out even just to one person that you weren't going to reach out to before, then this show is worth it. We could save a life today. And I can't think of anything better to accomplish today than that. That's the point of the show, right? So join the church for helping you grow your community, go out and help somebody else go out and it's fresh air, walk two minutes, join a prayer. Yeah, there are, there are so many things that you can do if you're struggling. And these are all good things, Mary. Very good suggestions if you guys are struggling and you're not sure what to do you can send me a dm i'd much rather read that dm than i get 100 messages a day from you people trying to sell me something or tell me how you can run my business better which is hilarious because most of you have no idea how my business is set up or what i'm even good at but <laughs> You know, like I get these sales pitches almost to the point where I want to turn off the open DM. I don't know if you know this, but I've, I've um, set it my profile so that anybody in the world can send me a direct message, right? And even if I didn't, if you go to BowmanDigitalMedia.com, 
right on the, the homepage, there's my email address. You could email me anytime you wanted, right? The reason why I do that is so that A, I can help people who need it, and B, I like to meet people. I promise you what I don't want is your sales pitch. A lot of you guys are using social media incorrectly, so let me help you with some sales advice. Stop making pitches to people you don't know because we don't care. We really don't care what you sell or what you think you can do for our business. You don't know us. You don't know our business. The, the presumption that you're making right there by itself is faulty. And you may be trying to sell me something that I'm better at than you are, which actually happens a lot. So there's that too. But if instead of making these stupid pitches that don't work, that frankly can turn me off, and then you never have a shot at my business ever, instead of doing that, if you make friends with people, support them, get to know them, then you know what's going to happen? It's the funniest thing. It works most of the time. If you spend the time instead of pitching your product, but relationship building instead, those people that you were going to initially irritate and drive away with your spam will actually be drawn to you and will start to want to learn about you. And they'll not only start to use you if they need you, they might actually start, and more importantly, honestly, referring other people to you. You go from a losing strategy that's awful, it's lazy, frankly, to a winning strategy that you can build an empire. Look, two years ago, I had 1,500 connections on LinkedIn, 1,500. Now I'm maxed out at 30,000. I have 188,000 followers. Why? I don't send people sales pitches in direct messages. I don't pitch people the minute I meet them. Oh, you need a website. Hire Bowman Digital Media. Oh, you you have 30 followers on your business page on LinkedIn. Let me take over for you and uh, and I'll grow it for you. I don't start out that way. Now, when you get connected with me and you see the activity levels that I bring and how successful my clients are, you might start asking me, hey, will you work for me? That works. That works way, way better. This is awesome. There's a website too, uh, LJ. Can you put that up for me? I actually don't even agree with that. I think the I think the global economy is changing because of the pandemic, but I don't think it's going backwards. I think it's going forwards. I think that from now on, you're going to compete on a global basis. I think that. That's one of the changes because of the virtual workforce. That's one of the reasons why I think that you're going to see a lot less, in my opinion, you're going to see a lot less corporate buildings. You're going to see a lot less giant corporate workspaces. I think I think that um, those days are numbered. Now, there are some industries where that's just not practical, right? Events, hospitality, things like that. But there are many industries where, you know, if you're not manufacturing or something like that, but you're doing a, a service, you don't necessarily need to have a giant office and uh, people can work from anywhere. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Here we go. So if you, if you're really struggling and you need help right now, visit crisistextline.org. There are other places you can go, of course, but get help. What I want you my crowd, my audience, and I appreciate you guys being here. What I want you to consider is social media, A, what you see isn't always reality. So please don't compare yourself to me or anyone else you see online because it, trust me when I tell you that my life is not a bed of roses, right? I was laid off. Yeah. What you see a lot of times from people is the highlight reel. Don't can, don't don't compare your everyday life to somebody else's highlight reel. That's one of the things I want to get across today. But also, I want you to please be observant for those who are your friends on social media and off, right? Reach out to them, send them a text, send them something. Check in. How are you doing? It could make the world a difference. And today, again, we could save a life. 
we don't know likely that we did. But that text, that email, that phone call, that direct message, somebody out there right now is struggling with the thought that nobody cares about them. They think that. It's probably not true. Most people do have multiple people, honestly, who care about them. For me personally, I mean, I could just go out right outside this room and my whole family cares about me. It doesn't always feel that way, but it's the truth. Sometimes we just need to hear it. We need somebody to reach out unexpected and say, hey, man, I just, I want you to know, I really care about you. How are you doing? Again, it can be, it can be changed. Maybe it is your glasses. I, don't know what that reference is to, but maybe it is. <laughs> maybe it is. So I am going to end the show now, but I want to implore you again to consider how you're doing. Take inventory, right? A lot of us have never been, I don't want to say probably everybody watching this show, have never been isolated for six months. Right? We all have our struggles, but this is something new. And so maybe in your mind, there is something that's just gnawing at you and you're not easy and you're not comfortable and you haven't identified it. And if that's you, maybe this is it. Maybe it's the isolation. And so then do what Mary Lynn recommended. If you're feeling that way, maybe you don't normally go to church. Maybe it's time you join one. And again, I'm not talking about religion specific, like go join this church or that church or whatever, right? Whatever your faith is, fine, then join that. Get active. Exercise. Are you eating right? Maybe some of the answer is to, to stop watching or consuming the media that you've been consuming, right? If it's depressing. Maybe you're watching news four hours a day, and maybe that's just not healthy because news isn't what it used to be we could talk about this on a show but news now it seems like is somebody's opinion not actual news it's spun and delivered in a way to get you to agree with the opinions of the person reporting the story don't don't be fooled right i'm gonna tell you my strategy for consum consuming news. I'm gonna spend 30 minutes on one channel that I know leans to the right. I'm gonna spend 30 minutes on another channel that leans to the left. And I know that somewhere, the truth is somewhere in the middle, right? So I know Fox News likes to, to advertise fair and balanced, they're not. CNN and, and NBC, MSNBC, all those channels, you know, they're not fair and balanced either. But the fact is, I'm smart enough as a consumer to go, okay, you're liberal, you're conservative. You're going to tell me what you think is best for your position. You're going to tell me what you think is best for your position. But the truth is somewhere in the middle. So one thing that I can take and I've learned to do is like, if they both agree on a point, there's your baselines, right? If they say, Job, job rate, unemployment rate is, you know, 12.6%, which is really high. But let's say that's what it is. If they both say it, okay, I could take that to the bank, right? But if one says the economy is great because unemployment numbers have dropped by 3% and another says, I can't believe unemployment is still 8.6%. You know what I mean? It's like, come on, man. That's some spin. The news and how you report it. So anyways, but again, I got on that topic because some of you are like really probably over petrified about where we are in the world right now. And it's, it could be because you've, you're taking in too much news. So maybe listen to some fun music. Maybe <laughs> instead of watching, instead of watching news, put on a lighthearted movie. It'll make you feel better. Oh, yeah, the glasses for that. You know, I don't know if you know this, Gene. I have all these glasses. 
I, I tend to stick to these ones. These are my newest ones. So this is the second pair that's the newest. These are reading only glasses. I wear bifocals, but these are reading only. And then I have my older ones, my red and my blues. And then I have another pair of white ones that actually broke, so I can't even wear those anymore. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's some, there's something about my personality. Um, and again, what you see is not even really me. And it's not that I'm being phony on purpose, but again, you're seeing the best of Ira on these videos, right? You're not seeing the Ira that's struggling, going, where am I going to find my next client? We don't seem to talk about that, you know, or if my wife and I are having a fight or my child's pissed off at me or I'm not talking to my dad. We don't have those conversations, right? So again, don't, I don't want you guys to compare your life to mine because you're not comparing your life to mine. You're comparing your life to the highlight reel. You know what I mean? And I try to be as open as I possibly can, but you're not seeing everything. Yeah, it's my, it's my pleasure. That's the whole point today is to let you guys know that life is, is, it's real for everybody. The number one thing I hate about social media is, and my wife talked about this yesterday, I think on Facebook. I know she's talking about it a lot. Like we see things and we compare our everyday experiences to somebody else's photoshopped or perfectly staged picture. You know what I mean? Like yesterday, I didn't take one picture of my life. You know what I mean? Like I actually wasn't even much on social media. I took a little bit of a break from social media yesterday. I was working on a website. But, you know, like you didn't see pictures of my food. You didn't see that my kids' rooms are look like a tornado went through this house. You know what I mean? There's all kinds of things that if you want to know my real life, you know what I mean? Like open the fridge and there's no food in it or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like life is life is a lot different than what you see on social media. Even with somebody as visible and as transparent as I am, you're still only seeing a small, small part of the whole package. So try not to compare yourself to anybody but yourself. A healthy goal. Sorry for hitting the mic. A healthy goal for you would be to compare yourself to who you were yesterday and who you could be tomorrow. How are you going to get that improvement, right? Make yourself a daily goal, a weekly goal, a monthly goal, a quarterly goal, a yearly goal, a three-year goal, and a 10-year goal. And then build yourself a, a develop a strategy talked about a business strategy earlier. This can be for personal or for business. Develop yourself a strategy that helps you, if you complete it, get to those goals. And then how you set up your day should be, you know, activities to accomplish those goals. See what I mean? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Even if you're not struggling, this is true, right? No doubt, right? And I'm not trying to be anybody else. I get a lot of people who compare me to some of these folks that are even larger than me on, on social media. And I'm not even going to name drop them because it doesn't matter. But I'm not competing with them. I'm competing with me. If you want to know the truth, Bowman Digital Media is competing this month with what we did last month. And next month, I'm going to try to outdo what we did this month. And I've got goals, long-term goals for growth, right? Scalability, you call it what you want. But the fact is, I'm not competing with any other media company, realistically, on the planet. There's tons of them, by the way. We have all kinds of choices. Let's go to Fiverr. You see, <laughs> it seems like billions of people who do what I do, right? The thing that makes me unique is it's me. You get my experience. You get my network. You get, you know, one of the things that I love about, now I'm just talking about me personally and, and the differentiators. One of the things I like about Bowman Digital Media is you get a marketing firm, social media marketing company with a person who has 20, over 20 years, honestly, of business to business sales experience. That is actually unique. <laughs> Most of these guys have marketing degrees 
and marketing experience, but no sales. I help people bring the two together. But also when you get me, you get my network. You know what I mean? And if you go to another company, you're going to get their experiences and you're going to get their networks and, and all that stuff. So, I mean, I can't be anybody but me and you can't be anybody but you. What you can be, if you allow yourself to, and you work at it, is a better version moving forward than you were before. And even the negative stuff that's happened, if you channel it, can help drive you to be better. One of the things that I've been open about, my sexual struggles, sexual abuse as a child, homelessness, these things allow me to be a sympathetic and empathetic ear to people who have struggled with similar things or are struggling currently with things that I've dealt with in the past. My experience allows me a different opportunity to be a friend, to be a counselor, to be a support, if you will, to people. And in a church environment, that actually has helped me quite a bit through ministry. I've been able to, to counsel men who struggle with fidelity, um, men who have you know been abused sexually as a child, maybe somebody who's struggling financially. They are on the verge of being homeless or they are homeless. I've, I've had conversations like that with many people. Uh, could be somebody who struggles with pornography, substance abuse, uh, physical abuse. I mean, all kinds of things, right? Not everything negative that has happened to you has to remain negative moving forward. You can actually flip a, a, a negative on its, on its end and use it for good. And if you have those types of experiences and you're open to, you know, helping people, that's one of the ways that you can do it is just be, you know, a support for somebody who's in the fight now, as opposed to somebody who's fought through it in the past. Thank you. I try to be nice. It's my it's my hope in life to help people is honestly what I what I'm trying to do with everything. That's why I started Project Help You Grow. It, it wasn't it wasn't um, you know for me. I have always had a job until June. <laughs> so then I needed a job and decided to just start my own business. Thank you. Appreciate that. So anyways, uh, I am gonna end it now. If you need me for anything. Again, I know there's people probably that, and you may have already done this, sent me some direct messages, although I don't see any in my inbox. Um, if you have something that you're struggling with and you don't know who to talk to or, you know, you just need a sounding board, you know, I may not be able to help you, but I want you to know somebody will. And if I can help you, I will, right? Life is far more important than vanity metrics is what I call it, right? How many people viewed my post today? How many people shared my post? How many liked my post? How many comments did I get? Whatever. That's all irrelevant, really. The bottom line is, you know, we all have to make money. There was a question about money and the importance of money. We have to make money because everything runs on currency, right? You've got bills to pay. You've got obligations to meet. So I'm not saying money is not important. But far more important in, in my life to me, beyond my obligations to, to make a living, is to make sure that I'm helping the people that I can. And I think that's a good thing for all of us to do. So if you need something, reach out, right? If I can't help you, maybe I, maybe I can help you connect with the person that can or a group that can help you, right? Like that's the industry.com. For um, John Smith and the other veterans that were in the room, that's one of the things. Vets to Industry is a um, it's a website filled with veterans. It's a they've got hundreds of people in their group, but that website has I think over a thousand different resources that you could click on. So it's like a, a resource bank, if you will. It's one hundred percent free, by the way. But their main their main Point. The, the reason they exist is to help military, military spouses, military family with the transition going from military life to civilian life, right? Finding a job, if you need counseling, if you need peer-to-peer -peer coaching, all that. They provide all that stuff. And it's all free, 100% free. So I'm, I'm, I'm one of their 
resource partners, you know, project help you grow. And I'm, I'm very happy to do it, but I, I'm just one. Like I said, I think there's over a thousand. Brian Arrington, who runs it, said at a meeting a few weeks back that you couldn't get through all the resources in one day, even if you tried, which is an amazing testimony to how much they've got in there. So check it out. Anyways, again, my name is Ira Bowman. Thank you very much for joining me. I will be back tomorrow at 9 p or i'm sorry 9 a.m pacific time i'm gonna have uh, and it's for follow me so if you're looking to build your uh network we do follow me every friday it's called follow me friday but i have the follow me live show kicks it off it's an hour-long show i'm gonna have a guest with me tomorrow russ johns and we're gonna talk about the pirate broadcast and some of the stuff he's got going on he was one of my friends who had joined me on social media concierge hadn't talked to him in a while He's been going through some stuff. He's a, He has an interesting background. Anyways, I'll introduce you guys to him tomorrow. And then on Saturday, I've got Ask Ira, Job Seekers Q&A, same time, 9 a.m. Pacific time, Friday and Saturday. Join me. I have Bianca uh, joining me from Slovenia. She's in uh, HR, and she's well-versed in the Job Seeker uh, world. And so we're going to answer your questions. I like to bring on guests. And so uh, she's going to be my guest. We're going to take your questions. You have a question about your resume, about interview prep, about transitioning military. Um, maybe you want to know how to do interview prep. Maybe you're looking to work abroad. Could be you want to know more about fractional work or how to build your social media profile. Or maybe you want to know how to research how much to ask for. You know, they, any of those types of questions. That's what the show is about. That one is actually on two times a week. I do that bi-weekly. So I have the show on Saturday at 9 a.m. Pacific and the show on Monday at 12 p.m. noon Pacific. So you just have the time just for wherever you are. If you're curious about where and when to find me live, you can go to my profile on the featured section. The very first art, uh, thing there is what I call the IRA guide. It has the day, the time, and the location of where you can find me. Thank you so much for joining be kind to each other out there, uh, people. It, um, it doesn't cost anything to be nice, so be nice, please. Thanks for joining. <laughs>